So what exactly is an emotional flashback, and what should you do when you're in one? Hi, welcome to today's video, this is Caster. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the key experiences of complex PTSD, emotional flashbacks. I'll be talking about the basics of complex PTSD, the basics of emotional flashbacks, some science behind emotional flashbacks, what emotional flashbacks feel like, and what you can do when you're in an emotional flashback. So what exactly is complex PTSD? CPTSD is a form of PTSD that is different from PTSD, and rather than being caused by a singular traumatic event, it is the result of living through many traumatic events over a prolonged period of time, typically during childhood. It has symptoms resulting from this, such as difficulty controlling emotions, feeling hostile or distrustful towards the world, constant feelings of emptiness or hopelessness, feeling as if you are permanently damaged or worthless, feeling as if you are completely different to other people, feeling like nobody can understand what happened to you, avoiding friendships and relationships or finding them very difficult, often experiencing dissociative symptoms such as depersonalization or derealization, and regular suicidal feelings. These symptoms are often accompanied by the symptoms of PTSD. So what are emotional flashbacks and how are they different from traditional flashbacks? Emotional flashbacks may not include the auditory and visual aspects of a typical flashback, rather feelings, as though you're being thrown back into the emotions of the threatening circumstances of your childhood trauma. As children, we may have dissociated during traumatic events to separate ourselves from the trauma of them and to keep us going. However, now as adults, when we experience emotional flashbacks, what we are experiencing are the emotions from the periods of abuse during which we dissociated and never allowed ourselves to feel anything. Emotional flashbacks can be triggered by something that reminds you of something traumatic that happened to you during your childhood. However, you may not realize that you're being reminded of this, and this is what makes emotional flashbacks so tricky. Pete Walker, who has written extensively on CPTSD and emotional flashbacks, says, Emotional flashbacks are sudden and often prolonged regressions, amygdala hijackings, to the frightened circumstances of childhood. They're typically experienced as intense and confusing episodes of fear and or despair, or as sorrowful and or enraged reactions to this fear and despair. Due to the individual often not realizing that they are in an emotional flashback, the reaction they have is often out of proportion for the situation at hand. They don't realize that the intense emotions that they're having are, in fact, a reaction to their abuse and neglect and abandonment as a child, and not a reaction to whatever the current situation is. When we were diagnosed with CPTSD, this is something that really helped me, simply learning what emotional flashbacks were. It helped me to start identify, if not when I was in an emotional flashback, at least that I had just had one. It helped me say to myself, you know what, I was just really upset, but I wasn't upset about this circumstance. What I was really upset about was something from my childhood. And starting to realize this has helped me begin to regulate my emotions when I'm really upset because I'm able to realize that I'm not actually upset about this circumstance. I'm upset about something from my childhood. And realizing this and coming to terms with this makes it easier to move on in the moment. Now, does this work 100% of the time? Am I always able to identify an emotional flashback and realize when I'm in one or realize when I've just been in one? Unfortunately, absolutely not. But getting there and some of the time being able to identify it and able to call it out is a big step forward and a big help and really important in the process of beginning to heal from CPTSD and beginning to manage emotional flashbacks and the inner critic that are just rampant and really debilitating in CPTSD. So what exactly is going on in your brain during an emotional flashback? Although this may sound like it's going to be boring, this is key to understanding emotional flashbacks. To understand what's going on, we have to talk about the autonomic nervous system and its two primary systems. The sympathetic nervous system, which is associated with the fight or flight response and the release of cortisol into the bloodstream, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for winding down the sympathetic nervous system and stopping the release of these stress chemicals. The sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system are meant to work together, but this is interrupted by prolonged child abuse, neglect, and trauma, and the continuous activation of the fight and flight response in the brain. An article I read recently describes really well what happens during an emotional flashback. During an emotional flashback, because your ANS is damaged and out of sync, the amygdala recognizes what it perceives as a danger, the trigger, and reacts by triggering the fight, flight, freeze response. This reaction engages the sympathetic nervous system, revving up your body and causing a significant amount of distress. However, unlike under normal circumstances, the parasympathetic nervous system does not engage to calm down the situation, leaving a person stranded in yesterday. 
So what does an emotional flashback feel like? Pete Walker gives a description of emotional flashbacks that I really like. Flashbacks strand clients in the feelings of danger, helplessness, and hopelessness of their original abandonment when there was no safe parental figure to go to for comfort and support. When in an emotional flashback, people will often fall back on their fight, flight, freeze, fawn responses that were once necessary defenses but are now damaging as adults by fighting and overasserting themselves in excessive self-interest, fleeing obsessive compulsively, freezing and numbing dissociative ways like sleeping excessively, daydreaming, over-fantasizing, self-medicating, watching TV, fawning in self-abandoning ways like codependent relating. Now, what should you do when you're in an emotional flashback? I'm going to read an excerpt from Pete Walker's amazing book, Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving. In the back of this book, he's got a lot of great toolboxes you can use, such as tools for resolving conflict, suggested interventions for recovery, gratitude prompts for yourself and others. The one I'm going to be reading from is 13 Steps for Managing Flashbacks. 13 Steps for Managing Emotional Flashbacks. One, say to yourself, I'm having a flashback. Flashbacks take you into a timeless part of the psyche that feels as helpless and hopeless and surrounded by danger as you were in childhood. The feelings and sensations you are experiencing are past memories that cannot hurt you now. Two, remind yourself, I feel afraid, but I am not in danger. I am safe now, here in the present. Remember you are now in the safety of the present, far from danger of the past. Three, own your right and need to have boundaries. Remind yourself that you do not have to allow anyone to mistreat you. You are free to leave dangerous situations and protest unfair behavior. Four, speak reassuringly to your inner child. This child needs to know that you can love them unconditionally, that they can come to you for comfort and protection when they feel lost and scared. Five, deconstruct eternity thinking. In childhood, fear and abandonment felt endless a safer future was unimaginable. Remember these flashbacks will pass as they always have before. Six, remind yourself that you are in an adult body with allies, skills, and resources to protect you that you never had as a child. Feeling small and fragile is a sign of a flashback. Seven, ease back into your body. Fear launches you into heady worrying or numbing and spacing out. Gently ask your body to relax. Feel each of your major muscle groups and softly encourage them to relax. Tighten muscles send false danger signals to the brain. Breathe deeply and slowly. Holding your breath also signals danger. Slow down. Rushing presses your brain's flight response button. Find a safe place to unwind and soothe yourself. Wrap yourself in a blanket, hold a pillow or stuffed animal. Lie down in your bed or in a closet or in a bath. Take a nap. Feel the fear in your body without reacting to it. Fear is just an energy in your body. It cannot hurt you if you do not run from it. Eight, resist the inner critics drasticizing and catastrophizing. Use thought stopping to halt the critics' endless exaggerations of danger and its constant planning to control the uncontrollable. Refuse to shame, hate, or abandon yourself. Channel the anger and self-attack into saying no to your critics' unfair, self-criticism. Use thought substitution and thought correcting to replace negative thinking with your list of your qualities and accomplishments. Nine, allow yourself to grieve. Flashbacks are opportunities to release old, unexpressed feelings of fear, hurt, and abandonment. Validate and soothe your inner child's past experience of helplessness and hopelessness. Healthy grieving can turn your tears into self-compassion and your anger into self-protection. 10. Cultivate safe relationships and seek support. Take time alone when you need it, but don't let shame isolate you. Feeling shame doesn't mean you are shameful. Educate your intimates about flashbacks and ask them to help you talk and feel your way through them. 11. Learn to identify the types of triggers that lead to flashbacks. Avoid unsafe people, places, activities, and triggering mental processes. Practice preventative maintenance with these steps when triggering situations are unavoidable. 12. Figure out what you are flashing back to. Flashbacks are opportunities to discover, validate, and heal your wounds from past abuse and abandonment. They also point to your still unmet developmental needs and can provide you with motivation to get them met. 13. Be patient with a slow recovery process. 
It takes time in the present to become de-adrenalized and considerable time in the future to gradually decrease the intensity, duration, and frequency of flashbacks. Real recovery is a gradually progressive process, often two step forward, one step back, not an attained salvation fantasy. Don't beat yourself up for having a flashback. And that's one thing I want to press upon is that flashbacks are a completely normal thing to experience when you have CPTSD and when you have experienced trauma. Well, that does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have things that you do during emotional flashbacks, I'd love it if you'd leave it in the comments below. It might help someone else and it might help me. I'd love for you to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I will leave a link down below to our website where we have resources and to our Instagram. I'll also be leaving links to some CPTSD and emotional flashback resources where you can learn more about them. And I'll also be leaving a link to Pete Walker's website where you can check out his articles and his book. This book has been awesome for us. As you can see, we've highlighted a lot of pages in it. There's a lot of really great stuff in it that's given me a lot to think about. Um, and really helped adjust our thinking about our trauma and our life as a trauma survivor. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time.